Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 432. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, consider the questions asked and answered on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, a legend in his own lunchtime. Tim is um, uh, a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, you can find Tim. Oh, I see Tim, by the way, has a new website. Is that right? Have you got the new Do you have some enhancements enhancements on your website? Yeah, it's just a redesign. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it yesterday. It looks great. So it's taken you two months to have a look, you bastard. <laughs> well, I didn't know. <laughs> um okay, where was I? Um that's right. Um Masataki Wasa, he's um, based in Wimbledon um, uh, in, in London. Uh, Masataki is a Google product expert on the Google uh, AdSense uh, community. And we can find Masataki at wasaweb.net, W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. -E um, and um, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. All right, let's um, move on to our first question for uh, the night. We have eight, I think. This one's from um, a, a strong supporter of uh, Damasio Questions, Neil Cheeseman. Um, and uh, it's titled, How Important is a Dedicated Server? Um, he goes on to say to ask in terms of hosting and hosting issues how important is a dedicated server or does having a content delivery network negate the speed for a dedicated server i am looking at wpx but they only offer shared hosting with their own cdn or, or content delivery network Well, I, I can um, say a few things uh, about a dedicated server. Um, having a content delivery network is is one thing, but the um, the, the page still has to be constructed uh, uh, from from the database uh, entries. So, uh, I. I don't think that having a, a, a CDN, um, you know, if, if, if the CDN is slow, then, then the, uh, the the website, well, no, maybe not. Um, mm, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, I, I don't know for certain anyway. Yeah, I mean, dedicated servers, can do cost quite a bit more, don't they? Well, they, they do. They do cost, um, but um, yeah. Look, I, I don't think that should stop you from buying one. The, the, when the actual cost of hosting, um, the, the, the actual cost of hosting is so cheap um, compared with you know what, what it does and. Providing that you're, you're running a business which uh, is business-like and, and there is a need for your business, um, then hosting it is you know, very low down on your list of priorities to, to shave costs from. Um, yeah. yeah. I suppose it's a question of cost-effectiveness, isn't it? I mean, I don't think the shared hosting is bad per se. I mean, you, could, you can have a very 
reliable and fast shared hosting. So mm -hmm. it's a question of you know, it's a question of the cost and the benefits. Yeah. Mm, how important is it? Ugh. Some good answers, and also uh, um, some new people. Um, I see there. Well, a hundred visits a day, and even four thousand a day, that's not a lot. I mean, I'm not so sure whether the costs whether you reap the benefits of dedicated servers for those figures. I mean, if you can have a reliable shared hosting for cheap, for you know, those kind of numbers, I don't think it would be an issue. I don't think you're going to get a huge benefit from using a dedicated server. Yeah. All right. Well, look. Um, oh, I see. Emin, Emin Johns has also responded uh, um, on this on this one. Um, I can't go past this question without um, pointing out, you know, people like Emin Johns and and the new people that um, I see um, um, contributing. Um, we, we all have um, particular skills in particular areas um, and uh, we can help uh, others very effectively. Yeah, I mean, I think nowadays uh, quite a lot of hosting is on the cloud, isn't it? You know, whether it's Azure, AWS or GCP. Um, I, think, I think there are fewer and fewer cases of people actually having physical dedicated servers, if that makes sense. Yeah. To the specific physical servers. So, yeah. Okay, will we move on, Matt? Yeah, I think, <laughs> as with so many questions, the answer is probably, it depends. But in this specific case, given the figures, I don't think it's going to be that important. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think people should skimp on hosting. All right, so let's uh, go to the next in our run list. It's question two. Uh, it's titled, I wanted to implement directories in my backlink profile. So I recently wanted to implement, it's from L. Makito. Um, he said, so I recently wanted to implement directories in my backlink profile. So it is, is it a bad spammy practice to use the same description uh, in these uh, uh, ecom directories? Uh, well, no, it's not an issue. The other, th because it's essentially a directory. The other thing that I'm more concerned about is, you know, where you chuck in these directories. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of directories you're looking at, but in the local, in the local kind of space, you know, when people go and submit to like 500 different directories, almost 90% of those haven't been found by a search engine six months later. Yeah, which shows you just how irrelevant they are. Um, you know, try and find the decent ones that actually, that actually, you know, um, may or may not uh, bring you traffic. Um, in all honesty, um, 
I have yet to find a business directory that has actually sent any meaningful traffic to um, any clients. Um, I was looking at one the other day and I think he, <laughs> uh, Yell um, managed to send two visits in a year to a uh, taxi company. Um, I literally, I just don't see any physical benefits in them. But, you know, as long as you realize that you're not going to get any kind of bump in it um, and you're just doing it for a bit more exposure, then yeah, fine. Yeah. Good one, Jim. All right. Um, if there are no objections, we'll roll on to number three. Santiago Lemony has asked the question. He said, uh, are you ready for a good, dumb SEO question? He said, uh, I'm working on a WordPress uh, element or WooCommerce site, and I want to rank my category pages. I wrote a, a top-notch, not spammy, world-class search engine optimization text, or at least that's what my mama said. Uh, describing the category that I wanted to include before the footer, but the developer didn't create category pages. The pages are just product categories, so I cannot add the uh, super nice SEO text that I wrote. I was thinking in a sketchy solution, but I, I, I'm not um, sure it will work or if Google will take it as suspicious. What is that, uh, you may ask? He said, I saw that if I create a page with the same URL as the product's category page, I can write the text that I want, and the page that the final user sees uh, is the product uh, ca category page. Um, so what do you think about it? Uh, I know I'm Mr. Sentence there. Um, he, said, he said, I know it is sketchy, but you never know, uh, it may work, and I will rank number one the day after. Uh, if you have uh, arrived, if you arrived here, I already love you, thanks. Well, good on you, San Diego. Um, well, what do you think, guys? Um, I would probably just see if you can, um, Enable the the um, text field to appear within the category page. Normally, if it hasn't been built into the um, the, the 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 design, uh, you can normally get it to display at the bottom of the category page. I would look at that first. Um, That's Anyone me done, done, Jim. That's me done. I'm done. That's yeah, yeah. I, 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 it finally dawned on me. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit slow, but uh, I'm not as fast as I once was. But uh, <laughs> anyway, Stockbridge Trustlow said uh, uh, in WordPress, assuming you have a proper theme. Uh, what you put for the category description should appear on the category page or tag page or attributes page, just like any other page content block. If it doesn't appear, that means your theme is not following WordPress standards. Um, all right. Um, um, we were joined by David Razam. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in... Uh, the sunny south of the UK in West Sussex, the same place that Prince Harry lives. Well, he's supposed to live anyway. That was the plan. Hmm. All right, let's 
move on down to uh, the next question. It's number four on our run list. Mateen Arain um, asked a question titled, I use a different type of domain name suffix. Uh, he goes on to say, if I use a, a different type of domain name Sussex, e.g. website.health instead of website.com or website.net, website.co.uk, will that be a negative um, ranking factor in terms of uh, SEO? Uh, assume that I'm in the health niche. Does anyone have any sources or slash studies that they can reference? Um, no, it shouldn't make any difference. Um, I don't have any sources or studies um, under my thumb at the moment, but um, um, yeah, go ahead and do dot health. Google's repeatedly stated that um, Googlebot is agnostic to uh, the um, domain extension. Googlebot doesn't care, doesn't give you any bonus points. Um, anyway, anybody else? All right, let's go to number five. And it's, is this uh, additional product category in the URL a bad practice? Al Bakito said, my WooCommerce site has a long slug um, slash URL, exactly like this. It's uh, HTTPS, uh, colon slash slash XYZ dot com slash product category slash testosterone boosters. Well, well. Um, he said that my dumb question, is this uh, additional product category in the slug a, in URL a bad practice? If so, then what are the practices uh, for shortening them? Oh, there's a bit more there. Uh, he said, I'm guessing I need a lot of redirects. Uh, if I can be guided to a content, that would be great as well. Um, no, it's, uh, it's not a problem. Um, in fact, um, having the product category uh, in the uh, in the URL um, is what's this? Oh, it's a week. But it's a WooCommerce site. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, uh, if it's in WordPress, then you will get products if you set up your uh, your URLs in in that way. Um, and yes, it's fine. Um, I would probably uh, make the product categories very clear. So it helps people um, when they look at a product category. I would probably stop. Uh, I would probably not uh, uh, make them too long either, just because it makes the URL look cl clumsy. But that's nothing to do with with SEO. Okay. Our good friend Lucas Regala um, pitched in and uh, answered uh, for Al Mokito. All right, let's move on to number six on the run list. Uh, Sadat Rayid Odawa said, uh, I have been focusing on low competition keywords. So that said, uh, hello, my site has a low domain authority of 10, according to Sembrush. And so I have been focusing on low competition keywords, um, brackets, um, 0 to 2 keyword density, um, in brackets. 
He said, however, I do, don't get it, traffic. Someone said, I don't get traffic because I target keywords of a very low competition. Hence, no one is searching for them. And I was, uh, I, I, uh, I was advised to try keywords of decent volume. And this means uh, uh, a bigger keyword density, regardless of my domain authority. Um, do you think this is a good strategy? Um, what is the right thing to do? What tactic uh, can a website of low demand authority use to get better traffic? Right. Um, it's not keyword density. Uh, it's keyword difficulty. Um, so these are um, these are low competition keywords. But no matter how you look at this numerically, and there's a good um, there is a good um, argument for for doing uh, for targeting low competition keywords, um, particularly in the early stages of your your business. But um, what you've got to ask yourself what's missing here is how relevant are they to your readers customers clients whatever it doesn't actually say what the uh what your uh business or your website is about so um always think about the people who you want to come to your site um always think about the people that you're giving solutions to um there's an old copywriting adage that says, where's the pain? Um, so think about the pain that you're trying to ease for your, your readers. Um, so that you, you can talk about uh, these, uh, how much relevance these, these key keywords have as well. So go back, think about your business, think about your uh, think about your readers, your customers, whatever they are uh, within the context of your business um, and start thinking about the the topics you're writing about um, with that filter on, if you like. Because, yeah, maybe I should, should add something. Because if these, if the key phrases and the content you're writing around those key phrases aren't... Um, um, aren't going to appeal to the people you want to come to your website. Uh, it's not that going to. F it's not going to fit in with what they're searching for. Um, and if you're not fitting with what they're searching for, then they won't find your your website when they make a search. Um, so there you go. I think that's. I think that's filled in the gap. Um, yeah. Hope that works. Hope that helps. Thank you, David. Can I move on to the next without thanking uh, Perry Bernard? Uh, uh, I know he's very, very busy in Auckland um, and he still finds time to uh, log on and uh, cover questions on WCA questions. All right, uh, moving up along to uh, number seven on our run list. Uh, he said, um, I targeted India, but I am promoting worldwide. Uh, Jack, Jack and Mathis. He said, I have my website, abc.com, uh, in um, the English language. Um, in Google Search Console, I targeted India, but I am promoting uh, worldwide. Um, you can say um, what his website was, um, that's really relevant to this one. Um, he said, Now I want to promote a specific one product, uh, a specific one product in Spanish countries, so that a may I buy. Spanish domain for that particular product, or B, on my existing site, um, can I add uh, um, the Spanish language product? No, if your answer is B, then I already have an English language product in, in the existing site, so it is um, fine uh, having two language products. Is it, is it fine having two language products 
on the same site. I see Michael Martin has uh, answered this question um, on the group. Oh, isn't this a, a great uh, it depends uh, answer coming up here, I think. Um, as Michael says, um, you can use hreflang to uh, have the English and the Spanish um, content um, coexisting on the same site. Uh, that's cool. Um, I haven't actually managed to read Alan's um, uh, answer, but he seems to be saying uh, what Michael says in the second half, which is that um, it might be easier to and more effective to have two domain names because um, it'd be easier to strategize, Michael says. Um, it's also perhaps, um, and I'm just struggling to think whether I've seen any research to, to back what I'm going to say up, uh, which is that people would see uh, their own localized CCTLD um, as somehow being better, more likely to to look at your site and take it seriously because it's it's for their their country, their market, for them. Um, so um, it's it's a depends. You can go about it either way. Um, I personally am not a great fan in setting up a load of different websites um, for one business. Um, it's uh, a management. It's it's a management problem. Um, you also just need to do potentially more work as well. Um, so, oh, it depends. Thank you, David. All right, so will we go move on to uh, the next guys? I'm recording that as a yes. Um, number eight on our run list, um, and um, oh, I know this one. And, and look, uh, Jason Wells, um, we 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 have a um, a, a, a specific condition of entry with, with our. Uh, um, our, our, our WCA questions group, we say, um, do not cross post. Um, just uh, pick one group, doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter if it's this one or another one, but just do one at a time. You know, you're not going to um, get any better uh, um, for, for seeing, uh, um the, the same the same uh, question and because it makes it boring for um all of uh, all of the other people who uh, um, uh, um you know also uh, you know usefully contributing anyway um uh, Yes, and Jason, so Jason if, you, if you're wondering where uh, um, your your uh, question went, um, you have to blame me. I I, I removed it. Um, any um, any more comments on, on there's no, there's nothing we can comment on, really, is there? Um, let me see. Oh, that's right. And Emin, uh, and Emin uh, went to went, went to a great deal of travel to provide uh, um, you know a great answer, but um, it wasn't um, taken in the same um, in the same um, way. All right, um, let me click this and. Um, okay, so this is 
Question nine. I didn't realize we had question nine. Um, Robert L. Mayo asked the question. He said, how do I market my SEO services? He said, um, uh, uh, startups searching and optimizer and dig digital media consultant currently doing audits of friends, businesses, uh, uh, and websites uh, to try to sell them on that. But outside of they're having a hard time becoming interested. Uh, anyone, does anybody have any strategies they can share? Outside of just trying to get word of mouth out, um, I, I really haven't had uh, any good ideas uh, or anything anyone can give uh, is greatly appreciated. So, okay, so the two biggest things for me is one word of mouth. Okay, so obviously you need to develop yourself, firstly, over time. Uh, that, that obviously comes over time. And I suppose the second biggest generator is my content in the sense of um case studies uh how i solved a particular issue um things like this uh or issues that you're seeing and then people obviously have that issue they search for it they find your content and uh then they get hold of you yeah i've got the same problem can you help me sort it out um so those are probably the two biggest ones. So for you at the minute, um, I would probably start with your own content. So whether it be case studies and case studies, yeah, sure. You're probably saying, yeah, but I need clients first. Well, actually you don't. I mean, you should have your own little, a couple of your own little test sites as such, where you, you know, testing new different things out. Um, how you've solved that you don't have to say it's your test site you can just say you know whatever the case may be or you could look at a particular area things like this um how to solve it issues you've seen coming up um particular to your area particular to any particular niche that you that you're working in um uh, I would certainly do that. I mean, I did a thing on, I mean, I, uh, I had a chiropractor come to me a couple of years back and I did a basic case study on, you know, local SEO for chiropractors. Um, the things I'd learned, how we'd improve them. And I suppose every six months I get a chiropractor who comes across it and gives me a call. So, that's what I would certainly concentrate on. Yep. Did um, Andy uh, Andy make um, the the makeover or another source, uh, Tim? Huh? What? Did Andy do the makeover? I'm just looking at your site. It looks a really good site. Um, that's, that's, that's a two-year-old freaking design, which I had des <laughs> designed by an agency. And then it just sat there for another two years. This is two years old. And then we only managed to get it working, I don't know, two months ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, um, look, it's time for us, I, I think, anyway. Uh, let me just click this to see if we're on our last question. Yes, we are. Um, and um, look, I, I can't go without thinking that the, the people that 
um, turn up um, every day and, and, and answer questions on uh, the WCA Questions Facebook group. People like Michael Martinez, uh, um, Brenda Malone. Um, um, oh, I always, always lose my uh, head function when I get to this point. Um, and I, I also thank um, uh, David Razam, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa for um, contributing and making uh, uh, Damasio questions such a valuable resource. We'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this all again. But for now, it's good night.